Welcome to this week's Friday Functions video. In this video, we're going to cover two functions, the concat and replace. These two functions are helpful in many operations and I've chosen to cover them firstly. Each week, we'll cover one to two, depending on the complexity of the formulas. These two, you're going to find to be super easy to use. So concat is actually a function that takes various parameters, so there's no limit to how many you can use with this one, and it just combines those different parameters together as a single string. Replace looks at a body of text, lets you say what part you'd like to replace, which is the old text, and then what do you want to replace it with, which is a new text. So let's see how we can use this in Microsoft Flow. We're going to go back to Flow, where I've done a little bit of prep. So I have a trigger here. And let's start this trigger with no parameters whatsoever. And I'm going to also have a variable called var product. Now I use variables whenever I plan to use something basically more than once. If I plan to use it often, I will use variables. If I plan to just use it once, I will probably use compose. Um, but it is the best practices to use variables when you're going to use this output more than like many times in your flow. So I've hard coded in here a string variable. You'll notice if you open this up that you need to select what's the type of your variable. So all I did was initialize a variable of type string and then I hard coded it to say Microsoft Flow. Then I added initialized another variable called version, which is also a string, that I set at 4.5. And here, I didn't want it to be a number, right? So I didn't choose integer and I didn't choose float. Float is for decimals because I want that to always say 4.5. I don't want any extra zeros to happen to occur after it. It's a product version number. So now that I have those two variables, let's play with the functions of this week. So I'm going to add an action called compose which is good, enables me to get a quick output. Then I'm going to click inside and pull over to the right where I can change to the expression panel. So please note that you need to change to the expression panel to use these functions. And the string functions are at the very top. And there you can see concat. And I love that Microsoft Flow helps you out by telling you what this means, right? In case you've never heard of a concat, you can read underneath, it tells you what it does. It combines any number of strings together. So we're going to click on that, which inserts the function along with the parentheses into your expression bar. Now I'm going to click in my dynamic content and pick the two variables. So I need to do it in the order that I want it to show up in. So I'm going to start with the product, hit a comma. It will give me some help here. Right, And this help is basically telling you that this you're now in the second string. Be careful not to read into this that you need to add colons. You do not, right? The What's before the colon is kind of just telling you what this is, right? So this is the text part one, and it needs to be a string, and now we're up to text part, part two, and that also needs to be a string, right? And so I can click on version, and if I go back up here, you can see that I have concat product comma version. And that's all I really want. I want these two things stuck together, okay, like Siamese twins. Now, remember when you're working in this area, you always want to remember to click OK before you click anywhere else. Otherwise, what you just did will be lost. So I'm going to click OK. And then we will go ahead and rename this combine variables, okay? And let's test it, all right? I love using flow to test because we can test and see if what we did turned out the way we wanted to. And we'll just run that. Now again, I don't have any inputs in my button this time, so we're just gonna run this from scratch. We'll add an input to the button just for fun later on, okay? So now your flow is run successfully. That's great news. Let's look at how it ran. 
let's take a peek at how it ran. So my little circle of hope is spinning here. In a second or two, we're here is my flow on the top. And it has no output because there were no parameters in there. There were no inputs. So that's empty. Then we had our product that we hard coded. We ended up with Microsoft Flow with a space in between. And then we have our version, which is also hard coded as 4.5. Notice I'm looking at the value of these variables because variables have names, types, and values. Notice the name of my variable is version, even though the name of the action is var version, right? So sometimes you can match them or if you, you know, whatever you think is best naming protocol, just pay attention to this is the name that you would use in the expression area. Um, and this is the string and this is the value. Now, what we said we wanted to do was put these two together. So let's look at our compose. And sure enough, we've got them combined together. Now the inputs and the outputs are exactly the same in this case because of the function that we used in this case. And it's on a compose. All right, so let's see if we can maybe take this a step further. Let's say, oh, I, I, um, Audrey, I don't really want that four slammed up into that W. Is it possible for us to put a dash in between there? Well, yes it is. And this is because the concat function can have any number of strings concatenated together. So I can go in here and type a single quote, type a little dash, and then close that quote. I just have to make sure that between each of these parameters, there is a comma. The only exception being at the end. Now I have on my keyboard a key that's called END or END. It's right next to my home key and my delete key. So I'll use END quite a bit to go to the end and just check that everything's nice and neat. Or I'll use the home key to get to the beginning to look at the front of my function. So I think it's good. So I'm going to hit update and let's test that. Okay, so let's open this up and notice that we now have a dash between Microsoft Flow and the version. Now, how would we get rid of the space between Microsoft and Flow? Well, that takes us to our replace function. So let's hit edit and let's create a new compose. Because this is the beauty of Flow, things flow down through the actions, which means that in this compose, I can use this output, which is the full product plus version plus a dash, but I want to use it, but I want to replace the space between Microsoft and Flow. So I'm going to click in my new compose and I'm going to go over here to my expressions and you'll notice that I only see one string function. If I click my little friendly see more, I can see all of the string expressions and I'm going to look for replace which is the third one. Notice again it tells you exactly what this does. It replaces a string with a given string. So text or this first parameter is the whole string that it's looking at. So why don't we put the output of combined variables there. Now next it wants the string that we want to replace. And I'm just going to click in the front and then click back here. And I'm going to put a single quote and literally just hit the space bar on my keyboard. And then finally, I'm going to put another comma because I now I got to tell it, what do you want to replace it with? And in this case, I'm kind of, this is too easy, but I'm just going to hit a single quote. It will put in two for me. And now I'm saying replace that space with nothing. Okay, then I'm going to click OK to make sure it goes in here. And let's rename this replace space. Okay, and then we're going to test and save and test. And I'm going to run my flow. And now you'll see that their space is removed. Very easy. 
Now I'm going to do something a little bit more complicated. And here's what I'm going to challenge you to do. I'm going to challenge you to do this while this video has been paused. So go open up your flow and try and do exactly what I just did and then this next exercise and then come back to the video to see if you did it right. So the goal that we're going to do right now is replace Microsoft Flow with a input to our trigger. Okay, that sounds a little complicated, but we're going to use an input on our trigger to replace Microsoft Flow with something in that trigger. Now, the only thing I'm going to ask you to do is um, don't use replace space. This is the big hint I'm going to tell you to use. I'm going to tell you to use combine variables for your output. And the reason is because we're going to use dynamic fields to replace the product name with what's typed up here. Okay? And so the product name that we have put into our variable actually has a space in it. So we wouldn't want to use this one because then our replaced text won't be found. Now, good point to remember though, if it's not found, then um, it will not error out. Okay, it will not error out. It will just not replace anything. Okay, so you go ahead and hit pause. I'm going to try and do this on my own, but you can come back because I'm recording me. You can come back and see if you did it the same way I did it. So just to resume, I'm going to add an input to my trigger that asks the person, what is your replacement? Right? So whatever they type in that space, then I'm going to use that in a replace function to replace the product name right here with what I typed. Okay? So I'm going to replace the product name, which you can see that here, the product name with what I typed. And I'm going to use this output because this one doesn't have the space. Okay, hit pause, try and do it yourself, and then come back and watch me do it to see if you got it right. So I'm going to click edit. And then I'm going to add an input to my manually trigger a flow. So I'm going to click add an input and type text here. And I'm going to just type replace with. So that is going to be the question I ask the users. What do you want to replace with? Now I'm going to scroll down and add a new compose. And then I'm going to choose that action. And I'm going to click in there, scroll over here. And I am going to go ahead and use my expression again. I'm going to use replace. So it doesn't show up automatically under string. But if I click see more, there it is as the third one. I'm going to put the formula in. And then I'm going to go back to my dynamic content and find the one that has the space. So this is the combined variables that we first did. It does have the space between Microsoft and Flow. I'm going to hit comma. I'm going to actually use the dynamic value for the product to say what I'm going to replace, comma. And then what am I going to replace it with? Whatever they typed in that trigger input. Now, Side point here, I'm going to click on input and hit OK. Because I type this during the time that this flow has been open and I hadn't saved it or anything, if I save this, if I don't save it, it just picks up input as the first thing for there. But if I go back and reopen this flow, now you will see in the dynamic fields that it will actually say what I typed up here, which is replaced with. So don't be surprised that when you're working live in Flow, sometimes your um, 
sorry, your trigger uh, might say input when you, you haven't saved yet, right? So, but it will change to match what you typed in the trigger after you save and maybe have to reopen it, all right? So let's look at this formula that I've typed up here a little closer. So I'm just going to open up my notepad so you can see it really well. This is probably the most advanced thing in this video. So I'm taking the output of the variables combined and I'm replacing it with the variable for product, which is secret to everybody is Microsoft Flow. And I'm going to replace that, so Microsoft Flow, with whatever they typed in the trigger. All right? Easy peasy. So let's test this. I'll perform the trigger action. And in this case, it's going to ask me a question because I have an input in my trigger. And I'm going to type here weekend. No, let's type Friday functions. Friday functions. And run this flow. So Microsoft Flow should be replaced with Friday functions. Let's start from the top, work our way down. So from the trigger, we've got Friday functions in there as a value input by our user. Then we have a hard-coded product name, which is Microsoft Flow, a hard-coded version name, which is var version. Then we combined the two variables for product and version, and you might remember we also added this dash in between. Now we did remove the space, but we didn't use this output in our last exercise because of the missing space. Right? We wanted it to be able to find the product exactly as it was entered up here. And then once it did, to replace that with what we typed, and so voila, it says Friday functions with a dash and then 4.5. And on that note, I'm going to tell you to have a wonderful weekend, and I look forward to sharing more helpful functions in the next Friday functions series with you. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.